Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and this is going to be an easy to follow tutorial for beginners, where I will show you how to paint with pastels in Procreate. So let's jump right into it. In order to achieve this, we are going to use my Epic Pastels brush set for Procreate. You can find it along with a free mini version for you to try out on my Gumroad page through the link in the top right corner of this video or in the description below. I thought we could use this photo by Gareth Paul for our reference, since the subject is pretty simple in terms of shapes and details, and there's nothing too complicated going on in the background. You can find a link in the description of this video as well, in case you want to follow along. We are going to create an 11 by 8.5 inches canvas at 300 dpi. The first thing we need to do is to import one of the paper textures that are included in this set. When painting with pastels, it is important to choose a color for the paper that will go well with the colors in our subject, since one of the pairs in the reference has the characteristic greens and yellows that we can usually find in this fruit, I chose the paper texture called hazelwood. Making sure that magnetics is turned on under the snapping option, we click on fit to canvas so that the paper texture covers the whole background. This layer needs to stay at the bottom of the layers menu during the whole process. I personally like to name the layers so that they're easier to identify. On a new layer on top of the paper texture and using the expressive sketcher brush, we can pick one of the red-brown colors from the color palettes that are also included in this set and start working on our sketch. The first thing I do is to roughly draw a couple of rectangles that will help me visualize the size and position of the pairs in the available space. They don't need to be exact, it's just to get an idea. We can use the transform tool and resize them or change them as much as we need until we're happy. We can then sketch the pairs inside of each of these rectangles. We can also use the eraser tool with the same brush and erase some bits and redraw them as much as we want. The point is to end up with an accurate sketch that represents the two pieces of fruit in the correct size and proportions. We can even sketch where the shadows are going to be placed inside each pair. We can finish up the sketch by drawing the table and the shadow that one of the pairs is projecting on it. We start by painting the background on a layer below the sketch. We are now going to switch to the clean cut scatter brush. You will see how this brush is going to be very fun to use and it will help us achieve beautiful results with very little effort. When using these brushes, the idea is to only use the provided colors since they are based on the colors available in real pastel brands. This self-imposed limitation will get us a step closer to mimicking the real media when painting digitally. It's important to not cover the background entirely, this way the paper texture and its color will show through our painting in more or less random spots and it will contribute to bringing the whole piece together. The randomness of this brush really helps to achieve this as well. It mimics painting with the whole side of a pastel stick and it is great for covering large areas while changing colors frequently as they will blend naturally in a beautiful way. We can also use it with the smudge tool in Procreate to blend some of the colors that are already in the canvas. You'll notice that there is no actual black color included in these color palettes. This is on purpose since avoiding black entirely and having to use other dark colors instead will make our painting a lot more richer visually. Speaking of richness, you can see how I used a ton of different colors in the background. I know they are not really in the reference, but if you choose colors that are in a similar range of values, you can experiment with throwing other colors in there and they will work. Mm -hmm. 
by switching to the dry pastel medium or strong brushes, we can be more specific in our brush strokes, like you can see me defining this dark spot here behind the pair. A nice trick we can take advantage of, since we are working digitally, is to use the selection tool to limit our brush strokes to a specific area. You can see how I'm selecting here the whole table. Now with the clean cut scatter brush, I can repeat the process I use for the background and paint the table without worrying about painting outside this area by mistake. Again, I'm choosing colors from the ones I have available in these color palettes and being careful to not cover the whole surface and leaving some of that nice paper texture to show through. I also use the smudge tool with the same brush anytime I want to blend some of the brush strokes. Now on a new layer on top of the background, we are going to be painting the pairs. Notice that we are still painting below the sketch layer. This will preserve the sketch lines so that we can use them as a guide. We can use the same trick as with the table and select the whole area of the pairs. And we can include the shadow projected on the table if we want. The clean cut scatter brush will give us a nice and rich base of colors for the fruits. Look closely at the photo reference and try to include all the colors you can spot in there. If you think about it, there's actually a lot of different colors that you can see in their surface. There are greens, yellows, browns, reds and oranges. The sketch we did is very useful because it's letting us know where the limits between the shadow and the light areas are placed so we can choose our colors accordingly. The idea at this stage is to paint the pairs very roughly, adding all kind of color variations we can throw in there. Here's a nice trick. If you press and hold the selection tool, you will recover your previous selection at any time. However, if we want to save a selection, in case we want to select something else and then come back to a previous selection, we can do that by clicking here on save and load and clicking the plus button. Then every time you click on the saved selection, you will recover it. Now using the remove selection option, I'm taking one of the pairs away from the current selection. This way I can focus on painting only one of the pairs without affecting the other. Using the smudge tool we can blend some of the colors in the pairs and get a more unified base. With this nice base finished, we can merge the sketch and the pair layers together. By continuing painting in this merged layer from now on, the lines of our sketch will blend beautifully with the rest of our painting. Now switching to the dry pastel medium brush, we can start defining the pairs better by adding more colors in very specific spots. Remember to look closely at the reference and try picking similar colors that you can find in the included palettes. You can switch between the dry pastel light, medium and strong brushes for painting more dense or more light with a more visible pastel texture. Feel free to try the three and see what do you like best in different scenarios. It is now just a matter of continue rendering both pairs, being careful to differentiate between the shadow and the light areas. Also don't be afraid to paint other areas of the canvas that may need a bit more work, like I'm doing here with the table and the shadows below the pairs.
we can go back to the clean cut scatter brush and paint back a few rougher brush strokes in the pairs and the table. This will help us achieve a very painterly look. Using the dry pastel medium brush, we can add a few highlights in the pairs and define a bit better the background surrounding their silhouettes. To finish up the details, we can switch to the pastel pencil brush, which will allow us to paint things that require a finer and more precise approach, like the stems of the pairs. The final touch we are going to add to our painting is importing one of the included pastel texture sheets. First we merge all of our painting layers and we place this texture on a layer on top of everything else. Double click on the layer to bring up the layer options and select clipping mask. This will make it so that the texture only affects the area we have painted, and not the ones where just the paper texture below is visible. Also make sure to set this layer to overlay mode, by clicking in the small n in the layer menu. From here we can continue detailing our painting, until we feel happy about it. You can see here how I'm using the selection tool to isolate very specific areas in the pairs and adding some additional brush strokes and colors using the clean cut scatter brush. My advice would be to stop before overdoing it and I'm sure you'll get a nice little painting. And this is the final result. I really hope you liked this video, if you use my brushes and post your art on social media, feel free to use the hashtag ManeroBrushes so that I can see what you create. I will be extremely happy to share your creations with my audience. Don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos and give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out my Gumroad page, where you will find my epic pastels brush set for Procreate, and many other sets and freebies that I have available, I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.